Hi, this is Dr. Geneva, and today on Ignite to Impact, listen to the Right Reverend Vashti Murphy McKenzie, author and champion of leadership, as she helps inspire us about change, transformation, and leadership. Welcome to Ignite to Impact, a weekly podcast about next generation leadership and what it takes to make a difference at work, with family, and in your community. Get ready to be inspired as we pull back the curtain and dive into intimate and energetic conversations with achievers and doers who are in the trenches navigating workplace politics and influencing change. Get ready to hear how leaders fail and get back up learning how to keep it together while traveling in their leadership journey. Our mission, to help you with leadership tips and strategies that you can use to get fast results and help make your business, community, and world a better place. Now, here's your host, Master Leadership Strategist, Dr. Geneva Williams. So, let's Ignite to Impact. Welcome to Ignite to Impact. This is Dr. Geneva And this podcast is brought to you by Dr. Geneva Speaks. Have you ever felt uninspired or not really sure of how to be civic-minded or community-engaged or give to others? Well, if you have, I can tell you that those feelings stop now. Because I have the author and champion of leadership on the phone today. The national voice for women, leadership, and social justice. And named by Huffington Post as one of the 50 most powerful women religious leaders in the world. The Right Reverend Vashti Murphy McKenzie. Bishop Vashti. She is the presiding prelate for the 10th Episcopal District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the first in the over 213-year history of the AME Church to obtain that position, that a woman has obtained this level of service and leadership. But her first don't stop there. She's the first woman to serve as president of the Council of Bishops, chair of the General Conference, host bishop to the General Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and president of the General Board of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. She was appointed by President Obama to serve on the White House Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, and she's an author of five books. The first two not without a struggle, and strength in the struggle, are concerned with leadership and professional growth for women. She is a workshop and seminar presenter on women, transformation, and leadership, and she is my guest today. I'm so excited. Bishop Vashti, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Geneva. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Uh, I admire your work and uh, your podcasts are just extraordinary, and I'm honored that you have me on your program this morning. Well, right back at you. The honor is all of ours. And, you know, I first have to ask you, you know, you're so accomplished, uh, so many first. What lessons have you learned about being first? <laughs> well, one thing about being first is that there's no book in front of you. There's no book to read about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no one in front of you to say this is how it works out. Uh, there is no conference or workshop uh, that you can attend. And if your mentors and coaches haven't been in that spot, um, they can only give you their opinion and not their experience. And mm-hmm. so uh, you're out there. And so when people ask me that question, I respond that there are three things that you need. You need God, grace, and guts, Mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Because God can put you in positions where you cannot put yourself in positions that you don't you are even afraid to dream of that are not mm-hmm. even on your radar screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, grace, uh, so that the make mistakes you make, and we all make mistakes. We don't care who you are, where you are, but we all make mistakes. And that your friends and your enemies cannot use those mistakes against you. 
uh, and then guts. <laughs> That's called courage, determination, perseverance. You just have the guts to say, okay. You, you have to have the guts to put yourself in the, that quagmire, uh, in the to run the gauntlet uh, to make it. Mm, God, grace, and guts. I love it. And so, <laughs> Bishop Vashti, when did when did you discover that? I mean, and how did you discover that about God, grace, and guts? Tell us a little bit about your lived experience. Well, I, I think it's evolutionary. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some things that happen. Uh, people feel that they happen overnight, but they really they happen over time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I grew up in an extraordinary family uh, where uh, my mother was one of five uh, sisters, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, five sisters, and my grandfather was a businessman, and he didn't have any sons, and so. Uh, there was no such thing as gender deciding what you can and cannot do. Mm-hmm. So I was surrounded by women who were editors and journalists and who were publishers, uh, who were uh, lawyers, who were doctors. And so really the gender never determined what you could or could not do or what you should and should not go. Mm-hmm. It was your gift that determined it. Mm-hmm. Your, your gift determined where you could go. And so uh, when you are surrounded by these kind of trailblazers, um, uh, that that gets in that seeks into you by osmosis is in your it's in your DNA, and uh, you have there are days in which you take a deep breath and say I'm going to move forward, uh, and uh, um, if there's going to be a no, it's not because I didn't try. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so you go around the country uh, speaking on. Um, Challenges facing women, transformation, leadership. What are your favorite topics? What's the things that you like to talk about the most and share with women? Well, I think the the thing that I like to talk about most is change. And uh, change and transformation uh, seems to be, uh, we back away from it. We don't like it. Many times change is something that happens because it's forced upon us. Uh, Some even change that we know we need to make. Uh, we mm-hmm. are so familiar with where we are, what we have, uh, that uh, even though it's not working, uh, we embrace it because it's what we're used to and it's what we know. Mm-hmm. And so stepping across that threshold into mm-hmm. new territories where I- I'm not sure what my role is mm-hmm. when change happens. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not mm-hmm. sure whether I'm going to like it or not. Right. Uh, but where I am is cool. I know this. I know where I am right now. This is great. And I can handle this even if it's wrong for me. I can still handle it because mm-hmm. it is a part of my familiarity. So mm-hmm. I like to talk to leaders and to women uh, about change and transformation and how um, and how you can take those steps to do it, which is what my last book is about. It's the big deal of taking small steps to move closer to God. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is about change and transformation, journey to the well which is another book I did several years ago, Mm -hmm. which is about change and transformation. How do you do it? We want it. We know it. It, It's there for us, but how do we get there? And so in the big deal, I uh, talk about most of the time when we say, okay, I got it. This has to change. This has to change for me. I got to lose weight. I got to go back to school. Mm -hmm. I got to start this business. I got to reshape this family. I got to help these kids, da, 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 da. What, what happens to us often is that we try to go cold turkey. We try to do the whole thing at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And then we get started. We start to get overwhelmed. We start mm-hmm. to backtrack. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, we're right back where we started from. All I need to do is ask you, uh, where, where are you with the New Year's resolutions you made several months mm-hmm. ago? Right. And we're like, uh, well, uh, mm, Right. Uh, <laughs> They're not there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, what I do in the book is break down change into incremental steps. Is that if you just mm. make a small change, just a 10% change, uh, master that process and then take the next step to move forward. Yes. Uh, and then master that process and then take the next step to move forward. Uh, because if you miss, if you back up, uh, if you uh, retreat from the trains or you do some self-sabotaging, because we do do that from time to time. Mm-hmm. Even the best of us do some self-sabotaging. It's not that far to start all over again. Mm-hmm. You're not as disappointed. Uh, well, okay, I blew it today, uh, but I'm stepping up to the plate uh, right now. 
mm-hmm. uh, to get to get back on track to this change and transformation that is needed in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes we're just so in love with where we are that when God brings new possibilities yes. in our direction, we never re- we never reach for it. We mm-hmm. just never reach for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, a part of our conversation is that we live in a culture, we live in a society that is changing every single day, and it's changing faster every single day. Uh, and then your success, your relevance in this kind of uh, fast-changing uh, culture, society that we live on, is going to be your ability to adapt. Mm. To adapt. Okay. Uh, that the strategies that work in the past may not necessarily work in the future. Mm-hmm. And we grew up with strategies. You know, mama did this, daddy did this, uh, my, my influence group did this, this is how we do things, this is how we do things. That may not help you in the 21st century moving forward. But your ability to adapt to new challenges, to new crises, and make it work for you instead of against you may be the secret to your success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you, it, I, I love hearing you talk about that um, that change, that transformation, because everybody goes through that. You know, I think <laughs> life is, is a journey of change and challenge. And I, I love what you say about the secret sauce may be your <laughs> ability to, you know, adapt, to, to figure it out. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have any, well, I know you do. I know you have lots of secrets and tips. To, but what's, what's something that you found success with in terms of learning how to adapt? Or is it something that just comes naturally, do you think? Mm-hmm. Uh, learning to, beginning to learning to adapt is beginning to decode. You know, if we would, you know, in seminary, mm. I would say to exe- exegete the situation, you know, decode the situation. Okay. Is this something that can be solved in black and white with facts and figures? Mm-hmm. And okay. so if it is solved with black and white facts and figures, then I know that the change and the, and the transformation, the steps forward, is going to uh, is going to involve me gathering those facts and figures. Okay. Uh, if it is of opinion, or let's say it's a, an emotional uh, process, mm-hmm. then I just may need to vent that emotion mm. so that I can get to the core of what's happening. Mm-hmm. Is it is it something that is beyond my control? Uh, what's going on, if it's beyond my control, then there's nothing you can do about it. Why is you falling apart about it, getting depressed, uh, going home, you know, unplugging the phone, getting in the bed and pulling the covers over your head and pulling the shades down? Mm -hmm. Uh, It is beyond my control. Then let's see what is beyond my control that can help me handle what I have to face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when I, you know, like, you know, you are you are facing a divorce. It's it's done. It's over. Papers are signed. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, my moving forward me is a part of me um, uh, investigating, or let's say, researching the process of healing, restoration, mm-hmm. and forgiveness. That means letting the other person, the debt they owe you, you letting that go. Mm-hmm. Because yes. they're gone now, and they're sleeping at night, and you still up, still fussing about That's what, right. they and what they said. <laughs> right. And you know, Bishop Vashti, it seems what you're saying also has a lot to do with forgiveness and forgiving yeah. yourself. Yeah, we talk a lot about forgiving others, but also, isn't there a process of forgiving yourself? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we know that any situation and any relationship, there are two sides to the coin. Uh, everybody has a part to play in it. And yes. sometimes we get stuck on stupid. Every, let the church mm-hmm. say amen. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen and <laughs> amen again. <laughs> we did it. We know we did it. We plan to do it. And now, um, and, and now it, it's there. And so forgiving yourself, uh, your first confession is good for the soul. That's right. Mm-hmm. But regret. Regret for the previous decision actually mm. is a trigger for change. Okay, now 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 break that down for us, Bishop Vastide. Now you said okay. regret is a trigger for change, right? Okay. Because I made the decision, I did it, done. I accept the responsibility mm-hmm. for my behavior, my mm-hmm. actions, or whatever whatever that was. Gosh, mm-hmm. that was bad. I feel bad. It hurt. It was painful. And mm-hmm. so now I'm going to avoid 
that pain. And in uh. order to avoid it, that's where change comes in the what comes in the door. And you have to be careful to be sure that that change is for good and not is a positive and not for negative. Uh, because if I'm coming out of a crucial situation where I'm paying for my heart was broke, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then that trigger for change may make you say, well, I'm never going to put myself in a position where somebody's ever going to break my heart. Right. And then you have to engage in that forgiveness so that you can love again. And mm. love without blaming the other person, about blaming the person you with now for what the other person did or didn't do. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> deep, 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 Bishop Vashti. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, we are having a deep conversation with the right Reverend Vashti Murphy McKenzie, author and champion of leadership. And she's sharing with us a, a number of things about God, grace and guts and different ways to uh, adapt, to, to decode. I love that, to kind of break it down, figure it out, uh, what this change is, what's going on. Uh, stop, look, and listen, and kind of figure it out. And then we just had a conversation. Um, she shared with us wisdom about regret and, and a triggering change. You know, Bishop Vashti, as you, you know, just as you've shared with us in these past few moments, you have so much uh, wisdom and nuggets and help women with transformation leadership. What, what, are you, what are women telling you about the major challenges that they're facing today? Well, what I hear from women who are in the field, who are, you know, who are working, uh, who are striving to be, you know, to get to the C-suite spot, uh, who, are, who are there, is that no matter how good they are, no matter what they do, that the door just doesn't seem to open. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You have women who are in the field who are training other people, for the, not just for the job they have, but for the job that's ahead of them, um, to be their to be their boss or to move up the ladder of success. Uh, and so that can be that unrelenting stress that no matter what I do, no matter what mm -hmm. I say, mm -hmm. no matter how qualified I am, no matter how much I prepare myself, mm -hmm. uh, I just never seem to get that break or get to the place where I see others who are younger and less qualified, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. who are of other ethnics or backgrounds mm -hmm. or religions or heritage who seem to just do that. I have done, you know, the work of self-examination to be sure that there's nothing in my personality makeup. Mm -hmm. But there seems to be forces at play that negate that negate who I am, my gifts, and my skills. Mm -hmm. That kind of stress is an unrelenting stress yes. that you can't get away from. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether you're whether you're on the job, whether you're at home, uh, whether you're in your influence group, your social social group that continues to play out in your life. Mm -hmm. So what I talk to women about is self-care. Self-care mm. is revolutionary. Okay. Self-care okay. is self-preservation. You mm -hmm. have to find ways to step out of that relenting kind of stress mm -hmm. to take care of you, mm -hmm. to take mm -hmm. care of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because, you know, it's just like being on the airplane. You know, when the oxygen mask drops, you have to put the oxygen mask on, some, on, their, on yourself before you help anybody right. else. That's right. Because you're helping somebody else, and then, you know, you don't have what you need to live and breathe mm -hmm. uh, and to think. Uh, and then when you go down, the only thing they're going to say, isn't that a shame? We knew mm -hmm. she didn't have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. just, yes. Yeah, I did not tell you, did not tell you, though. They didn't have the smart, the strength, the cute, whatever was needed. They ain't have it. See, they gone. They gone. Mm -hmm. They gone. They gone mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have to have a good combination of, yes, preservation, uh, preparation, then perseverance, and then you're going to have to take care of yourself mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. so that you can uh, be able to stand within the heat of the day. And so um, that's, that's one side. The other side is, is that we have to work um, in ways in which we can to change the climate so that it's our gifts that make room for us. That's not what Bashtar says. That's what the Bible says. Your gifts will make room for you. Yes. Uh, and so that we mm -hmm. can create the atmosphere that no matter who you are or where you are, if you have that gift, uh, not only do you recognize that having the gift is your permission to exercise that gift, but others around you will be able to recognize that gift and not sabotage it 
uh, and not try to squash it out of you, but give you the free reign and space to be exercising that gift for the benefit of everybody, Mm -hmm. for the benefit of Mm -hmm. everybody. So you're you're saying that it's a combination of that self-care, taking care of myself so no matter what happens, if that door is closed, if I can't break, make a breakthrough, if I'm not getting noticed or accepted or I just can't do it, at least, at the very least, which is probably the very most, I'm taking care of myself. So there's that part. And then there's this part that that where we just have to know the truth and our, we have to know our own truth and value what our gift is so that it just shines always. Yes, and but have you noticed that there is a great rise of entrepreneurs? Yes, uh, you, yes. You have both men and women yes. who are leaving corporate places and so forth mm-hmm. uh, who are developing their own uh, their own entities. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I dare say it's pro- probably one of the fastest growing process uh, for men and women right now, yes. uh, especially for younger generations and millennials mm-hmm. is to go the route of uh, you know entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't appreciate me? That's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going over here. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to do my thing. Yes. I'm going to do my thing. I'm mm-hmm. going to start my own business. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to hire my own people. I'm going to create the culture, um, the kind of culture of success. Uh, that I wish I was in, but I'm going to create it for myself, my family, and for others who will work with me. Yes, I love it. I love it. And, and you know, as we're seeing this rise of, you know, this entrepreneurial spirit and this entrepreneurial focus and mindset, um, there always is this... Um, you know this this question about uh, you know can I do it? Will I do it? Um, do I have all that I need to be able to do it? It really is about taking risk. Oh, yeah. um, you've been in so many uh, situations. I, I know just from your background where you've had to step out there, take risk. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Some of your risk-taking <laughs> ventures that you can share or what you learned from them? <laughs> well, you know, it's um, one of the, um, you know, being, uh, let's say, the first woman to pastor several congregations that yes. were not looking for women, uh, congregations who were, tra- uh, who were traditional, and here I come with my contemporary self. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there, there's always change and transformation that, that needs to take place, and that's always a risk in how to do it. Uh, but what one of the one of my officers said many years ago is that we have learned um, not to not to say no uh, when we hear the new vision. Uh, we just learned that we're going to jump off this cliff and make our wings as we go down, mm. and so that and that's what risk is: is jumping off the cliff and making your wings as you go down. Now, everybody can't do that. Uh, some need to have a plan that builds the ladder down from, from the cliff, uh, and they are gifted to do that. Uh, and then others like me, we just got to take that leap uh, to make it happen. Uh, one of the things that we uh, strive to do is to, to be sure that in our collective culture that we find ways to assist uh, other people that may be outside of the tradition and the norm. Uh, mm-hmm. And so what we have done uh, in each of our Episcopal districts is to organize 501c3 organizations mm-hmm. uh, to raise and identify resources outside of your traditional matrix of ties and offerings uh, to be able to uh, resource uh, persons in local communities. Yes. Uh, and we have been able to do that. Now, mm. that's not within your traditional matrix of a hierarchy denomination. Mm. Uh, and many people say, no, it's not going to happen. We're not able to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now, oh, eight, love eight years it. later, mm-hmm. uh, you're talking about raising more uh, than close to a million dollars already. Absolutely. Uh, Beautiful. To be able to do that. Yes. Uh, I love that. I mean, Bishop Vesta, I love that vision because you know as particularly as 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 black people in america um you know our our spiritual beginnings no matter what denomination no matter but that's where black people in america 
went, get their roots from. You know, the, it was the church, uh, the church that provided self-help, the church that provided a place. Black philanthropy started there. Black self-help started there. And so to have this vision that you're talking about now and just vision and action um, where, in fact, you're you're giving, you know, mission and uh, raising dollars to, you know, help folk <laughs> is just right. is just wonderful. And it goes along. I think I think it does with something that I understand you're a, a quote that you you kind of love. Maybe it's your mantra. I don't know. You got it. Give it. You know it. <laughs> do it. You see it. Tell it. But the main thing is share it. That's right. That's yes. right. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. I have I have preached that. Yes, <laughs> it's I know that you heard that. Okay. Yes, I did. That's why I wanted absolutely. to let the world know <laughs> too that um, this was you know what you talk about. Right. Uh, it's it's the joy of collective action. Yes. It's the joy of uh, collective resourcing. Uh, that what what you experience inside of a closed environment. Uh, that the learning, the growth that takes place. Uh, the refuge that strengthens you, mm. the hospital that's about healing you, yes. uh, the fellowship where um, you are accepted and where you know where you belong. Uh, then what you have on the inside needs to come on the outside mm -hmm. uh, because it was it was never <clears throat> it was never about uh, just being in a closed society. It was always being about. Uh, what we discover in Christ, we must take mm -hmm. to the outside. And so that's mm -hmm. where if you see it, tell it. If you know it, do it. Uh, if you have it, give it. But ultimately, you must share. That's so right. if I have experienced the love of God in tangible ways, then I must share that. If I have experienced that acceptance and belonging that has been denied to me by the wider society, then I, I must share that. If I see the healing, I see the deliverance, I see the change and transformation, then I must tell someone about it, uh, because ultimately that's how we all got to where we are. Somebody told us, somebody showed us, somebody exposed us uh, to a vision, to an idea uh, beyond ourselves uh, that opened our eyes, that gave us, um, uh, help us to see beyond our present boundaries, to help us to look, uh, look to the horizon, to see what's over the hill. Someone, someone did that for us. Uh, and coming, it wasn't. It wasn't the internet. It wasn't the text messages. Come on now. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, you know. It wasn't on Facebook. It wasn't an internet or Snapchat. Uh, is that is that personal sharing one to another? And we cannot lose this in this high tech age. We still have to be high touch in this high tech uh, age that we have uh, because humans need to have high touch. We we cannot accept uh, alternate touching. We we're gonna have to maintain our human contact and let the church say amen <laughs> well you know when i started this conversation bishop vashti i told my listeners that if they were feeling uninspired and not sure how to be civic minded and know how to do collective action uh, that feeling was going to end after listening to you. And I was right on the money on that. The Right Reverend Vashti Murphy McKenzie, Bishop Vashti, Dr. McKenzie, we love you. And thank, oh, you, thank you so thank much. You. I mean, you have just, um, and I just love the way that you, you know, share your message in a way that's inspirational uplifting in the light of God and at the same time very practical very real and authentic um, and sharing you know you're you being first in so many ways was just not enough for you it, it had you had to show the way for that so that there'd be lots of others because this whole this whole belief you have about collective action and standing on the shoulders of others. So thank you so much for sharing all of that with us, Bishop Vashti. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Geneva, for, for having us uh, to share with you uh, and your listeners today. Uh, it's been a joy. Uh, it really has been. And I celebrate the connections that we have 
uh, and hope to be able to share with you again. I hope so, too. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. You've been listening to Ignite to Impact with your host, Dr. Geneva Williams, an award-winning executive, facilitator, and master leadership strategist. Dr. Geneva is passionate about inspiring others to get their own leadership on and empowering the next generation with leadership tools and tips to help make the world a better place. Sign up to download Dr. Geneva's audiobook on leadership. Get the show notes, links, and other resources at drgenevaspeaks.com. That's drgenevaspeaks.com. Thanks for listening. Please share this podcast to those in your community via Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Google+, and leave us a five-star review in iTunes. When you do that, it helps others find the show better. Send your questions or comments to info at drgenevaspeaks.com and use the hashtag Ignite the number two impact.